Marvin on top with the Kangas Khan, Rotom Heat, Raylu, Milotic, Sylveon, and Aegislash. TFC going to be running Kangas Khan, Amoongus, Azumarill, Landris, Aegislash, and Thunderous, a team that we know so well. Azumarill is actually making a huge comeback right now. Yeah, Azumarill's big. It, uh... It starts so much offensive pressure. Like, as soon as you see it hit the field, you're already concerned because you know that Belly Drum is one turn away and that plus six Aqua Jet is two turns away, and that's terrifying. Um, but uh, the the Breloom uh, is actually a good, pretty good answer for it. Uh, Threatens Spore if you try to set up around it. Can't be uh, Rage Powdered away with an Among Us, and uh, gets that big Bullet Seed in. Yeah, possibly carrying a Focus Sash too, most likely. Uh, that's going to be huge. Uh, of course, to provide support for these Zuma, we have the Kangaskhan and the Amoongus, which are two uh, key components of this team, in my opinion, if he does bring Azumarill. Of course... Well, and another thing he'd want to use to support Azumarill, especially against his Breloom, get it intimidated with his Landris, but that Melodic on the other side of the field is going to cause, cause problems for that. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, Sylveon is there, a Pokemon that we don't see too often anymore. A lot of people players opt for the... Uh, a lot of players opt for Gardevoir a lot more for their spread damage, hyper-voicing abilities, They're screaming into the microphones and stuff like that. But it, it is still a very powerful Pokemon. It was on some teams in the top eight of the World Championships. Of course, it was also in the finals. Uh, it was on Koki Honda's runner-up team. As we now go into turn zero here, of course, Kimo probably going to be bringing... A very solid team with Kangaskhan and Aegislash here as Arvin gonna go with Kangaskhan and Breloom. Yeah. Alright, probably expecting that Azumarill to come in right there because you got two really good counters as we said. Yeah, uh, trying to keep it from getting early game pressure. Uh, you don't. These are still good Pokemon to have in. You're not in a terrible position because you led them, but you kept yourself from being in that immediate bad position of leading something that is very vulnerable to that uh, belly drum and and so forth <laughs> from Azumarill, and so yeah, good thing to do when you're when you're facing against it. But that's part of the uh, power of Azumarill is you can kind of force your opponent's hand in some situations in Team Preview. Right now, though, this uh, Breloom might put a lot of things to sleep. It could possibly put the Kangaskhan to sleep. Can also put the Aegislash to sleep too. Or it could get one hit killed by return. Not if you get faked out. Yeah, but so we'll see. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough call. Like everything, every turn here is just gonna be a 50-50 in my opinion. As we see, both Kangaskhan's now going to Mega Evolve, no point not Mega Evolving, although I guess Kangaskhan on Arvin's side could want to possibly smack Aegislash with a Power Punch of some sort, but not going to go for it. Kangaskhan now going to go Fake Out onto the Breloom, going to break the Focus Sash now. Kimo getting the huge advantage here, as what is Kangaskhan on Arvin's side going to do? Breloom flinches, Kangaskhan goes straight for the low kick, now going to target down this Kangaskhan, doing a good amount of damage, should be able to pick up the Knockout, does pick up the Knockout on that Kangaskhan, so losing the Focus Sash on Breloom, but getting a pretty... Big knockout on that Kangaskhan as Aegislash now going to be free to move and sets up a free substitute. Yeah, this that's a trade you love as the Kangaskhan. Like, you gave up the Sash and get a bunch of health on Breloom, but it really forced his hand because even going for the substitute, Breloom could have outsped, spored the Aegislash, it can't King Shield. Like, maybe an Amoongus switch is like the only way something doesn't fall asleep in that spot other than faking out the Breloom, but faking out the Breloom immediately gives up the KO. Uh, now Landers comes in, tries to kind of stop the uh, the pain, get the Intimidate in on Breloom and Kangaskhan. Aegislash with a substitute is not as, nearly as vulnerable to Breloom and can KO it with Shadow Ball. Uh, can try to, it's definitely not a immediately a game losing position, but you never want to lose your Mega on turn one. No, especially not when you have Kangaskhan, the best Mega in the game. Uh, we're going to have to see if Arvin has anything to deal with this Aegislash behind the substitute. As we do see Rotom switch in right now, uh, Landris is going to switch back out, going to recycle that Intimidate. Where is he going to go? He has a Thunderous, so that is actually a good matchup right now for Arvin as well, it's just revolving door Pokemon. Every Pokemon switching out. Kangaskhan decides to switch out too. In his own Aegislash, probably trying to take a Flash Cannon if the Flash Cannon does target down there. But I think you're right, the Shadow Ball is going to go into the Heat Rotom. Where is Aegislash going to attack as it switches into Blade Form? Goes no. for the Flash Cannon. Nothing is going to be taking that much damage from it. Good call right there from Arvin. Yeah, great switch in. I would have expected to see the Shadow Ball maybe predicting a Protect on the Breloom spot. Uh, gets the safe switch in. Uh, that's damage is still useful though. That's it's definitely gonna be carried by the next Shadow Ball now. Yeah, I, I mean nowadays it's all about Age Slash speed creeping. Now you know like who's who's gonna be the faster Age Slash. Rotom if it wants to, it could sacrifice the special attack stat to break that Age Slash focus stash in order for his own Age Slash to be able to get it off. As Kimo gonna go Swagger now onto that Rotom, 
Gonna try to prevent it from moving. Now it's a 50% chance of moving. Rotom now confused. Is it gonna be able to make a move? Is it gonna be able to make a move? Rotom spinning. Goes for the Thunderbolt. Targets down oh. the Thunderous. Gonna get some chip damage on that Thunderous there. Ah, that's not chip damage. That's a lot of damage. That's 50% right there. As we see the Life Orb revealed. Aegislash now from Chemo side. Gonna go Shadow Ball. Targeting down the Aegislash. Is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout? It is enough to pick up the knockout right there. That's a huge turn. I was expecting to see the Thunderbolt to the Aegislash and then maybe the other Aegislash move first, KOing the Aegislash from Chemo's side of the field. Neither of those things happen. Gets good damage on the Thunderous, but at a high cost, uh, losing his own Aegislash before he even attacks and keeping the sub on the field. That means when this Breloom comes back in, it's not a threat to Aegislash. Thunderous can taunt it or outspeed and hit and power it. Uh, Breloom's just not in a good position at all. I definitely think that the best play right there would have been switching that King's Hunt, get some fake out support. Maybe that Thunderbolt can break the Aegis Slash substitute. It, it can if it doesn't King Shield, well, that's right. Yeah, it's in sword form, it definitely will break. Because from that Life Orb Rotom, we saw how much it did to Thunderous. So yeah, that's it, a lot of damage. It probably breaks even in shield form. So anyways, now it's it's a tough spot. This Breloom coming in doesn't really do much. Maybe gets off a pop mock punch onto the Thunderous, but that's not going to do anything at all. Although we do see the Thunder Wave onto the Breloom. Breloom now goes for the Rock Tomb onto the Thunderous. I stand useful. corrected. That knocks out Thunderous. Now, a now Rotom's going to be able to pick up or go go for the move. Rotom now. Still swaggered, though. Confused. Is it going to be able to move? Hits itself in Confusion. That is a huge hit in Confusion. As Aegis Slash now goes for the Shadow Ball. Where is he going to go with it? Going to go ahead and target down the Rotom. Does Rotom hang on? Rotom hangs on. That's but big because now Kangaskhan comes in not intimidated. Yeah, it's it's huge, but it probably will KO itself with the next Life Orb. And Aegislash should be faster than Breloom now and be able to outspeed and KO. Uh, Landorus may be able to outspeed and KO Rotom. If both those things are true, then this is really you have to out of protect the Rotom. You have to protect the Rotom and let Breloom get knocked out. Yeah, but then you're playing Kangaskhan versus the world. Ag no, no, Aegislash is part of the world. Protect the Rotom. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. Rotom does snap out of confusion. Rotom does go for the protect here. Uh, yeah, it's a tough call. I mean, Kangaskhan coming in a couple turns would have been a lot better. Uh, Landorus now going for the Rock Slide. Does connect with Breloom. And Age Slash going to go Flash Cannon. Probably predicting a Kangaskhan switch in into that slot. Well, there's no reason not to, right? right. You know, does Shadow Ball, the Shadow Ball would have. And uh, if it does switch, for some reason, you get the yeah. damage. And Age Slash now. Okay, all right. Uh, I think a Sucker Punch would probably KO Age Slash. Yeah, it definitely would. So now it's down to mind games like this entire this entire game is, right? It's going to come down to and what's going to happen. Depending on how that Landorus is trained and what item it has, an overheat might carry Landorus. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it, it depends on how slow it is, right? So if that if that Landorus doesn't just rock slide, tries to get more damage on Kangaskhan with something like Super Power, it's, it's risking that, which probably forces it into rock slide. Uh, then it's up to what Aegislash has to do. I think you fake out the Landorus. Let Rotom do some work. See, it's between the fake out and, and the sucker punch, right? If you can fake out the Landorus. No, no, no. I think I think Aegislash can. T I think Kang's going to take one flash cannon, right? Right. Fake no, out no, the Landorus. Can. Fake out the Landorus. Go for the overheat, and then sucker punch Aegislash on the next turns, and then it comes down to mind games as to whether or not uh, sucker punch is coming in. Yeah. Or you can sucker punch now, and uh, take the rock slide. Not for much damage. Landorus won't be able to KO you, and and KO with a couple Sucker Punches. Most, so many Landorses are choice in one way or another, or Assault Vested, where there is no Sucker Punch mind games. I, I, I mean, the best option still, I think, is get rid of that Landorus, because Age Slash can get Sucker Punched by, by, what's it called? Can get Sucker Punched by Kangaskhan, right? Right? Yeah. Pick out the Landorus, knock it out. Unless this is your opportunity to get the Sucker Punch in. You can take a flash cannon. It's not, what it's not the point. You can take a flash cannon. That's, yeah, I know you can, cannon. but yeah. you uh, you need to you need to get more damage on it. It doesn't matter if you take the flash cannon if more damage on who? On the uh, the Kangaskhan, and you're giving it up. Wait, who are we talking? Whose perspective are we talking from? I'm talking from Arwen's perspective to win. Yeah, you but fake out the landers, go for the overheat. I disagree. I think that's the play. We'll see. Kangaskhan does go for the fake out here. Targets down the landers. Gonna flinch. That does a lot of damage to that Landorus. As Landorus does flinch, Rosen, Rotom goes for a hidden power. Just gonna go for the hidden power here. Don't Target down the Landorus, picks up, picks up the knockout. And now Aegislash goes for a flash cannon on the Kangaskhan, and now it's just a sucker punch game. Yeah, I think you could have. Uh, 
I think you could have had this game with less Sucker Punch Mind games. But it's all I mean it comes down to Sucker Punch Mind games no matter what. Yeah. I don't think I don't think you should have No, why would you target down the Landers? With with why would you target down the Aegis Lash for the Sucker Punch now? That's just my question. Because then you can just KO the Yeah, but then you lose your Rotom and then now it comes down to Kangaskhan versus Landers. Yeah, which you win. Not really. You can't lose it. What if that? What if that? What if that? Landers was going for the superpower button. It only cares if it's choice band, right? And it can't be choice band because it rock slid. It's it's all it's all sucker punch mind games. Every yeah. Aegis slash and Kangaskhan game is even just sucker punching last turn means you're predicting it to attack. You could have king shielded last turn, and if you try to sucker punch, it's wasted. It's it's sucker punch mind games no matter what. Yeah, Aegis slash now going to go for the king shield here, and. You know, not going to take any damage now. It's going to try to stop Sucker Punch PP if it even has Sucker Punch. Does Kangaskhan have Sucker Punch? Kangaskhan does have Sucker Punch. And now... One down. Seven to go. Seven to go. I mean, it, it doesn't matter about stalling out all the PP. It matters about when he thinks that Aegis Hash is going to go on the offense and when well, it's Well, is not. Sucker Punch even a KO right punch. now? I, it's it's going to be close. If not, Life Orb's... Well, yeah, but Life Orb doesn't... It's still going to be TFC's victory. Aegis Hash hangs on with 11 hit points. And Aegis Slash now going on the offensive. This is why you KO the Aegis Slash on the turn you could have. It's It was tough. It was a tough position anyways. Kangaskhan does get knocked out with a critical hit. Uh, Life Orb is going to knock out all the Pokemon. It's going to be a 0-0 victory in favor of, of TFC anyways. So, yeah. TFC takes it yeah, over Arvin. Well played. Uh, managed his Aegis Slash really well there at the end of the game. Gets the win. Yeah. Goes to 5.